On episode 120 of the XJ Talk Show, I do my best to try and keep my voice on, and Tony does his best to try and keep the lights on. Josh gives us some more specs on the new Jeep Renegade and shares with us some future plans Jeep might have with the new sub-compact SUV. Rob gives us the breakdown of his own experience with the federal lemon law, and John joins us for the first installment of Radio Contact. All that, some iTunes reviews, and more hot ball joint talk on the next XJ Talk Show. Wave, Renegade! Breaking news from around the world. Something has just happened. More after this. Welcome to the XJ Talk Show. You're listening to the premier podcast about Jeep Cherokees, off road adventures, tips that you can use, and interviews with people in the off road industry. And now, here are your hosts, Tony and Josh. Yes, yes, this is Tony. You know me as Motoroy on XJTalk.com, which is the reason why we're here, the most premier website out there for Jeep Cherokees. And here's my co-host, Josh. Otherwise known as NW99XJ or Northwest 99XJ on XJTalk.com. And folks, you're going to have to bear with me. My voice is not holding it out very well. I kind of still a little bit sick from last week. And uh, so this show should be very interesting. We'll see how long my voice actually holds out. Ah, you'll be fine. Knock it off, you whiner. Yeah, I know. Always complaining, <laughs> aren't I? But thanks for being here, Josh. We could always uh, go back to the olden golden days where it was just me and tr- not trying to be very loud at the house while I was doing the show because I didn't want my family making fun of me. Oh, boy, that episode <laughs> one, that's a classic. You guys got to go back and check that one out. And uh, I, I promise when I, te- when I say this, I'm not lying. The times before, maybe, but this time I'm, I'm serious. We got a great show tonight. Lucky you that to be here on the first great show that we're having <laughs> <laughs> right got a whole bunch of stuff for you guys uh, some youtube subscribers we're going to talk about some chit chat as well some itunes reviews we got a uh, little segment from rob he's going to talk about his jk and uh, we got a new segment we're going to be introducing as well so stick around absolutely hey this is the xj talk show a podcast about jeep cherokees off-roading the tech that you need to get you there and back. We're here to promote the web's most premier website for all that is Jeep Cherokee, xjtalk.com, the friendliest, most helpful Jeep site on the web. xjtalk.com encourages and answers all questions and concerns for the first time XJ owners typically have without flaming or criticism, all while giving you the best, most in-depth articles and write-ups for the repairs and modifications to take your average XJ to the next level. Now get ready. It's the XJ Talk Show, and it starts right now. First week in G. Well, we've got more to love, or maybe more to hate, about the 2015 Jeep Renegade. Now, it was just last episode that I broke the news to you guys that Jeep has done it again by slapping an iconic name badge on a yet-to-be-proven chassis of what looks like a rejected LeBron James basketball shoe design. (laughs) Now, here we are 52 years after the first Jeep released the Renegade and 42 years after the last one rolled off the assembly line. Now, the Italian Jeep designers apparently think that we can't remember that far back. And we now have a new Renegade hitting the scene. Now, all this time, there's no V8, and you certainly won't find the iconic Renegade emblazoned on the hood lines. Nope. This one falls into the same vehicle size category as a Geo Metro and has just about as much curb appeal. Now, we've got to admit it, they did at least try to pay some homage to the Renegade's original off-road heritage. The new 2015 model will be a four-wheel drive only platform, meaning there's no two-wheel drive only options here. Or is there? Now, the vehicle has not yet even hit showroom floors yet, and let alone the factory assembly lines, and there's already talks about an SRT version. If you guys recall, I've long since hailed the uh, success of the Grand Cherokee SRT with its 465 horsepower and myriad of awesome technology like the same kind of launch controls found in supercars. Now, hoping to ride the coattails of its success, the Renegade SRT has yet to be handed an official release date or information even regarding the power plant and drivetrain options. But I digress. Now, let's get back to heritage. This new Jeep is going to retain the very popular and distinguishable 7-slot grille and semi-boxy shape that has become the telltale signature for most Jeeps. 
This one also gets the open air wheeling experience. That's right, kiddies. The roof comes off of this one too with the My Sky roof system. Now, this is where the roof panels actually come off and are stored in the rear cargo area. It will have the best in class off road capabilities, which isn't saying much because its class consists of the Nissan Juke and Kia Soul. Yeah, real off road contenders there, huh? Yeah, no, that's, there, w- there will be a Trailhawk version of this as well. It comes with a four-wheel drive system that gives the drivers a 20-to-1 low-range mode for the most extreme of mall crawling. Now, expect to see a whopping 8.7 inches of ground clearance in a wheel articulation of, get this, around 8 inches, as well as plenty of skid plates underneath. Now, you're going to need those skid plates, too, if you plan to t- hit any trails with this thing. This little shoebox on wheels, well, it's not going to perform all all that great off-road, at least uh, with his current setup. Now, we're not going to see this at, at all until fall of this year at the very earliest. So you're going to have to wait until then to see what the rest of the automotive world thinks of this, both on the road and on the trail. But until then, I'll be sure to keep you guys up to speed on all the developments of the release and some of those little Easter eggs we've talked about in the past. If you'd like to submit a show to be aired on This Week in Jeep, please send an email to newstips at xjtalk.com. You know, Josh, uh, that doesn't sound all that bad, though. I mean, it's neat that they're kind of doing some of the stuff, like you said in the in the article. There, it, it it's nice that they're actually go, you know, having the the the, the open air touch, and it's just four wheel drive. And uh, but it's it's still kind of sad they couldn't do that to the uh, you know our namesake of the 2014 Jeep Cherokee. There's a lot of stuff that's going into this uh, into this Renegade that I really would have liked to have seen happen on the Cherokee, on the new Cherokee, that is. Interesting stuff. You're listening to the XJ Talk Show. Please help Tony and Josh get more listeners by telling a friend or two or three about the podcast. It's so simple. Just tell them to go to xjtalkshow.com. Okay, look, Tony is really insecure and he measures his success by how many people listen to the show. He is driving us crazy. So please tell a friend. This is Pearson Love, Vice President of Jeep Camber USA, and you're listening to the XJ Talk Show. Hey, you. Yeah, you. The one just sitting there listening to the XJ Talk Show. Why aren't you a part of it? What? Tell me more, you say? Well, it's pretty simple. You can become an XJ Talk Show reporter. All you need is a smartphone and the ability to talk to people. Just email reporter at xjtalk.com for more information. Hey, we'd like to take a few moments here to welcome our newest YouTube subscribers. We got 430 now, Josh. Yeah, they just keep adding up dozens and dozens all the time. The list just keeps growing and growing. And folks, if we don't get to you right away, I promise we will soon. First on the list, Matt the Handyman. Then we got Swing for Greatness 8. Swing for Greatness Nate. I guess it would be a Nate in there somewhere. Uh, Gilly Kenny rounds out number three spot. And uh, Matthew January. Yeah, folks, like I said, we've uh, we've got a huge list, and it just keeps at getting bigger and bigger every single day. Uh, that's awesome. You guys are doing your part in subscribing, telling a friend. Please make sure you tell a friend. Get them to subscribe as well. If you uh, have recently subscribed and uh, are expecting to hear your name on the list, we'll get to you sooner or later, I promise. It may not happen uh, you know, next episode or something like that, but, uh, but I promise we'll get to you soon. I know you've heard us talk about Amazon on the podcast before, but if you heard about our new game... You bought what? It's a lot of fun, and we want you guys to play along. All you have to do is go to xjtalk.com or xjtalkshow.com and click on the Amazon banner there on the main page. This takes you right to Amazon, where you can buy any crazy little thingamajig to join in on the fun. Amazon gives us a list every week of what you guys are buying, but we don't get to know who it is that's buying it. As an added bonus, you get the same great price you always would, and Amazon is going to give the show a small pittance for you playing along. So let's all have some fun. The XJ Talk Show and Amazon.com. Hey guys, uh, this is our, uh, our our valued chit chat section, <laughs> and uh, it doesn't seem like we do this as much anymore, Josh, with all this other great stuff that we have to offer on the show. Yeah, I know, and uh, and I'm uh, kind of in between stages on the Jeep right now. I think the next thing that's going to be happening is the uh, is the ball joints, and uh, but before we get to all that, I, I really wanted to uh, to take a moment. Um, and, and mentioned that you know I'm really I'm really glad to see some xjtalk.com users stepping up and buying some stickers and whatnot from the Hidden Wounds XJ yes. project uh, and showing their guys uh, showing their support. Uh, really, thanks a lot, guys. It, it's awesome. I know it means a lot to me. It means a lot to the show, uh, to Tony, 
uh, and of course to the guys over there at, at Hidden Wounds XJ Project. Um, keep up the good work. Uh, for all the details, please go back and, and listen to episode 119. Really gave them a good plug. They're doing some good things over there. Uh, so please keep up the good work and keep those stickers flowing. And Josh, uh, XJ Talk uh, Show hasn't purchased anything yet. I need to get the information. Uh, it's probably there on the website or something, but I missed it. And uh, we need to get together and uh, make that purchase. And uh, we'll uh, show it up on the site. Yeah, we got a little sidetracked uh, post show last week and uh, in doing the promo and everything else and, and forgot to get to that. But I will make a note and uh, we will be sure to make something happen this evening. So, as I mentioned, guys, uh, my ball joints are shot. I've mentioned this a couple times over the last few weeks. Now, uh, this is from a recent wheeling trip that happened, uh, well, about three or four weeks ago, a month ago or so. And uh, and I'm gearing up for another wheeling trip here. And this is the one that everybody's giving me a lot of grief for because I'm going to get paid to do it. <laughs> well, I'm not going to make any profit. I'm just going to get my tank filled with gas and and probably lunch paid and, and stuff like that. Or yeah, I know, I know. So, but I can't turn down a free wheeling trip, right? It's just going to be wear and tear on the vehicle. But uh, before I can do that, and before I can take um, you know somebody else's clientele along with me in my Jeep, I have to uh, make sure the ball joints are are in good repair and good shape. And that's really oh, about the only thing right now that's on the Jeep that's giving me any grief. You know, you don't want to break down if you're being paid because no, you know, no, there's nothing it's, worse than a, a, a hooker's false teeth fall, falling out of the wrong moment. <laughs> oh, it's nothing like that. These guys are all salesmen and stuff like that, uh, process engineers and things like that. But uh, uh, no, so but nonetheless, yeah. I mean, I you know I'm part of the equation. I got to make a good impression. So sure. I mean, part of the part of the whole thing is to make sure these guys have a good time. So uh, and I can't be doing that in a broken rig. And uh, since I've already committed to this, I really need to get my butt in gear and uh, and make sure the Jeep is in, in, in good working order and ready. Hey, uh, whatever the whatever you got to tell the girl to spend some money on your Jeep, I'm with you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> now, so so here's the thing though is is I've been doing a lot of research over the last couple of few weeks about ball joints, mm-hmm. and just last week, excellent. Weekend, uh, I need to do this too. Uh, did you well, see my post on xjtalk.com about it? I, uh, I might, I might have skimmed over just, it. Just go I, I with really, it. Say yes. Yes, Tony. I have. It's the most, <laughs> this the best post I've ever seen. <laughs> no, no. I started the ball joint post, uh, because of our conversation here. And well, I think I need to change them on mine. So, uh, I, I've been doing some research and I've found some really interesting things. So this is great. I mean, well, uh, this is good. Now folks, Tony and I don't oftentimes talk. We, we, uh, we have a little bit of chit chat throughout the week, just through, um, you know, through, through instant messenger and, and text and, and whatnot. And it's, it's generally show related or just BSing and whatnot. But <laughs> yeah. oftentimes we wait until the very last minute to compare notes as far as what we're going to talk about on the show. Uh, and case in point right now, Tony's mm-hmm. done his own research. I've done my own research. And so you guys get a chance right now, uh, completely, uh, you know, un, un, uh, unrehearsed or anything. Uh, Tony and I are going to compare notes on ball joint research. Uh, so, uh, Tony, I mean, I've, I've, uh, I've got some notes here in front of me and stuff like that of stuff that, that I've been finding and, and, uh, and reading about and whatnot. Um, but I'd like to hear kind of where you're at with things. Well, no, I've just, I've just really skimmed the surface, just really started. And I was surprised to see, I don't know if the if the I've seen some pictures of Mopar cut you know cutaways, and mm-hmm. they have that plastic insert in there, and they don't right. look very beefy. And they they every place I've uh, seen it online, they're called Mopar, and I don't know if that's the same thing as the Spicers, like I just put on the ninety nine. You know, that's a question I can't answer, unfortunately, but I can tell you that a lot of um, what are considered OEM replacements, this would fall into the Spicer, the Moog, and and some of the other ones. Um, as far as OEM replacements, they have that acetyl or some sort of a composite liner in the socket. Uh, and obviously it's a, it's a ball joint. So there's a ball, it's got very much like your shoulder or, or you know, another joint or in your hip, body. Hip replacement got, is what it reminds, reminds yeah, me of, very, you know, all these lawsuits with all the little plastic things in there that are going bad. Yeah, exactly. And that's, and that's really the, the one thing that fails now that typically that, uh, that little, uh, acetyl sheath that's in there is meant to make sure that even if you run it dry or in case of a sealed ball joint where you don't have a zerk fitting, um, it's meant to where it, to keep the two bits of metal. Yeah. No metal on metal rubbing. Yeah. Sock, yeah from rubbing on each other, well, obviously, which is going to cause some issues if it's not properly, uh, properly lubricated. It can also call cause, uh, a, a marring and, and a galling and stuff like that, where mm-hmm. the metal will actually start to stick to itself. Yeah. And the, that so, area starts getting wide and then you start getting knocks and pings and, 
uh, pretty soon the thing can separate. Actually, I've, I heard some, I read some pretty bad things about separation while driving down the road, and I don't want that to happen. That scared the yeah. hell out of me. Absolutely not. So, uh, you know, this Crown, Spicer, Moog, these are all kind of fall into the direct OEM replacement category. Really? Because uh, I've, I've that, read some good things about the Moog, so I'm kind of surprised they're in the same category. Well, they are now. Now, for years oh, okay. and years and years, Moog was the go-to as far as ball joint replacements and oftentimes even tie rod replacements and things like that. Uh, for steering components and, and whatnot, Moog had been the industry leader and, and by far one of the, the more favored um, uh, manufacturers to go to uh, for this sort of stuff, in the, in the, especially in the Jeep, in the Jeep crowd and, and more so even in the, uh, in the Cherokee crowd for whatever reason. And um, recently, and I don't know how recently, and I haven't done as much research, I've lived first level research here, folks, um, but Moog recently, and I don't know how recently, but they have been either uh, bought by a Chinese company or have moved their manufacturing to um, to a Chinese corporation or, or somewhere. In, in any regard, uh, the the quality has gone downhill significantly here in the very recent past uh, with a lot of the Moog stuff. Uh, there's some stuff that's obviously still out in inventory uh, that's still sitting on shelves that people are still getting, but then there's a lot of stuff that's obviously getting um, is getting ma- made and and out faster than the stuff on the shelves can get can get out. So uh, people are you know hey I bought a set of Moog joints you know 15 years ago uh, they lasted you know 15 years I bought a set a year ago and they haven't lasted 12 months. Yeah, that's and, a shame. You know, it's it's you know and, and I'm I'm seeing this over and over and over again and it's not just ball joints it's tie rod ends and it's I, joints it, there's a, a whole bunch of stuff yeah. that let me let me ask good. you real quick before we get into trouble saying this now uh, I'll just pre- preface this with this is our opinion because I don't know that I have any information I don't know if you have any information that it, it is actually uh, parts are being made from China and even, even if they are I don't know that they're that they're subpar they may be better. Right. And, and again, this is just our opinion, my opinion, based upon the research that I've done, the stuff that I have read uh, from what other people are saying online. Now, obviously, I have not contacted Moog myself. I have not delved too deep into the research to find out exactly where things are being, being made, what the change was exactly. A lot of this is just hearsay, uh, but this is seems to be the common hearsay. And so it's get to the point of where, well, if everybody is saying the same thing, everybody can't be wrong. Uh, but don't quote me. I Again, this is all just what I'm reading online. You can't believe everything you read online. So, yeah. Well, I'll give you an example. Everybody's talking about global warming, and I don't... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a very <laughs> good point. I don't necessarily believe that... Uh, I believe in go- global warming, but I don't necessarily believe that we're the cause of it. I think that big old yellow thing that rises every day is, is has a lot more power over it than than we do little of us. I think it's another one of those center of the universe type things, but anyway, I digress. So, um, yeah, l- let me, let me move you along a little bit. I'm interrupting a lot. Uh, so, and I think I'm taking you off your, uh, your planned, uh, uh, what you had, uh, the motion that you were going through, but I am really impressed and I, I'm trying to get some good information on these. Is it cis energy or s- synergy? Synergy. Synergy. Yes. Synergy suspension systems um, or synergy manufacturing. Um, supposedly one of the better brands. And, and uh, there's, there's been some, um, uh, some online ribbing a little bit as far as Synergy and the brand that I've actually been leading to, leaning, leaning towards, which is Alloy USA. Mm-hmm. Both have very comparable designs. On paper, the numbers are, are right there. The 4130 Chromali, um, you know, the, the manufacturing uh, process that goes into them, the way that they're assembled, they appear to be very similar in design. Uh, obviously made by two completely different companies that have no relation to each other at all. Uh, but it's a, uh, you know, if you're doing something right, uh, emulation, uh, imitation mm-hmm. is the highest form of flattery. Yep. Obviously, I don't know who came out with it first, uh, but one of these companies is sort of copying the other. And uh, I know Synergy, uh, in fact, is uh, the Synergy ball joints are being used on the Team Naxja King of the Hammers rig. Ah, uh, I like hearing that. Yeah, now that that's definitely a good report. Now, however, what I've been reading is the synergy ones. It's hit and miss. Uh, I've been reading a few reports of people getting bad synergy out of the box. Meaning, and this happens. I mean, it it it, it just plain and simply happens. Things slip through the cracks in quality control. Um, you know, manufacturing techniques. Sometimes tolerances don't get checked right, and you end up with a batch or a, an item and out of a batch that ends up passing through QC 
and end up going out onto the shelf. Well, or somebody has a stocking error yeah. and they re, you know re sent one back. Uh, it was supposed to get refurbished or destroyed. It right. ended up getting restocked or something like that. You know who knows. I don't know ex yeah, the exact but details. If, but if they spend the right time and their quality control, that shouldn't happen very often. Now, to be fair, I've heard the same thing about Alloy USA. And the two negatives that I've heard from both of them are it didn't fit. Now, the one thing that I can see this happening on is because of there is a one number difference between the Grand Cherokee and the Cherokee <laughs> ball joints. And I bet my bottom dollar that that's what's happened. Yeah. Now, again, it could be a stocking issue as well, um, whether it be automated or, you know, you've got a bunch of people on assembly line, uh, one slips through the cracks and the wrong ball joint ends up in the right box, that mm -hmm. type of thing. Yeah. Uh, it happens. It happens with everything out there. So, you know, it's, it's, it, you're bound to pop, have these little bad apples pop up now and again. Now, when I'm seeing dozens and dozens and dozens of the same type of reports coming out, well, then you get, um, you know, things like, uh, uh, you like the, like the Moog reports, you know, where people are saying, yeah, the, the quality's really gone downhill lately and this is why. Uh, so, you know, it's, it, these are the, the isolated bad reports with the Synergy or the Alloy USA are just isolated incidents and aren't, aren't a direct reflection on the company or the product as a whole, at least as far as what I'm reading, because I'm reading way more positive mm -hmm. than negative. Did you also read that it takes a thousand mile break in before they start, uh, before they loosen up that you actually have to fight the steering, uh, when you initially put them on there. Uh, and I yeah. think that's like returning it back to center. <laughs> yeah, that, that is in fact the, uh, yeah, the return to center, uh, of the steering. And I've heard that. And that's, that's one of the big gripes is the JK crowd right now. The, the, the newer Wrangler crowd is really having a hard time because honestly, the only other high end or heavy duty, uh, ball joint replacements out there uh, either uh, don't have a whole lot of review on them, mm -hmm. uh, come with a made in Taiwan sticker like the like the Mevotechs do, M E V O T E C H, um, which are hailed very uh, very fondly by the uh, by the Dodge pickup crowd. Uh, these guys are swearing by them in the Dodge pickup crowd uh, circles, but um, but there's really no lengthy, reliable, durable type of reviews, durability reviews on these Mevotechs in the Jeep communities. Uh, but they're hailed as one of the more heavy duty ones. Now, I mean, if you want to spend your, your best dollar, there, there is a company out there that um, makes a rebuildable ball joint. Uh, you install these once and it's, it's, you know, one time and forget about it because these things are built bomb proof. And these are used on a lot of Jeep speed vehicles uh, they're used in a lot of race vehicles. A lot of the the buggies and the truggies and stuff like that will be using these things. Uh, I'm not sure if they make them for the Dana 30s, though. Uh, my research has found that I, I'm finding a lot of Dana 44 and a lot of Dana 60 stuff. But Dynatrack is the company who makes $650 sets of ball joints. <laughs> well, God bless them. Now, have, yes. you heard, <laughs> have you heard about the, uh, and I'm, I don't have it in front of me, the information in front of me, so I'm just working from memory here. Uh, XRF or XFR? Yes. Okay. Yes, it's XRF. And, now, and now, again, are they the ones with the million looks, mile warranty? Yeah, they, they look <laughs> yeah. really good on paper. Um, and they, they claim to have some of the best manufacturing process out there. They too use a, a high end chromoly, mm -hmm. uh, uh in, in the manufacturing. Uh, but this is the one thing that made me really shy away from the XRF ball joints is they still use, uh, the composite or the, the acetyl internals. Oh. The, the cup. It still it still has the acetyl in there, which is a weak point, uh, especially if you end up like on on a lot of washboard, yeah. uh, you know, trails, uh, you know, logging roads and stuff like that. You get high cycle, um, you know, very very uh, you know vibrating type of, of road conditions. Um, he, he would be you know, a lot of, of heat impact, would be generated like that, that way too. Yeah, yeah, and and heat is going to build up. There's going to be a lot of friction, and you know, these things are going to wear out, plain and simply. Uh, so yeah, uh, anytime, XRF. anytime I see a million mile warranty, I think, uh, <laughs> gimmick, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Because I think it's, I think it's AutoZone. Now, I mean, obviously there's, you know, Napa has their own brand. Yeah. AutoZone has their own brand. Uh, I'm sure CarQuest has their own brand, you know, pick your car, uh, your, your auto parts store. And I'm sure they're going to have their own brand, um, a, a, of, of a ball joint Now, AutoZone ones claim to have a lifetime warranty. If this breaks, bring it in. We'll give you a new one. The problem with that is, um, they don't you know, replace it. They don't well, put it back yeah. on for you. <laughs> right. And if you have a ball joint failure, I mean, complete all out failure, 
uh, on the freeway or something or on the trail, I mean, this could be a potentially a life and death situation. And I don't frankly want to be in that kind of a situation no. with a ball joint. So a lifetime warranty or not, I mean, I would, I would much rather replace something every year on my own accord if it came down to it versus risking it failing on me um, because of poor manufacturing or, or, you know, whatever. Well, that's the thing I like about the, the synergies and, and perhaps the um, alloy USAs are the same. Mm-hmm. I, I haven't seen a cutaway of those. It's, it's metal and it's like a, 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 you know, a metal post or a, a post with a ball and it's encased in metal. So mm-hmm. I don't see it coming apart. I don't see the plastic failing and, and warping or, or melting away and actually pulling p- potentially pulling through. So that's one of the things that I've been very interested in, in knowing is right now, I'm, I mean, I'm pretty much sold on the uh, synergies. Uh, I found them on Amazon.com. Really, no plug here, guys, but it, it, it's good for the show. <laughs> but I found them on Amazon.com for like uh, two and a quarter. Uh, and I'm an Amazon Prime member, so that would be uh, their Prime. So I would... Uh, get them uh, shipped for free. And that's, that's for a set of four. Now Synergy uh, makes a lot of suspension components for the Jeep. They make a great set of polyurethane um, bushing kits for the Cherokees. Uh, you know, this, this covers everything from, um, you know, tie rod boots to sway bar um, mount bushings, uh, things like that. Uh, you know, they they are, they have a good reputation in the off-road industry. Uh, I just personally, I'm not 100% set on the Synergy or the Alloy USA for that matter. Um, my gut is leaning towards the Alloy USA. Mm-hmm. Now, just this last weekend, I actually uh, had a chance to see these things in person. Uh, they were ordered through Amazon.com by um, one of our site users. Um, a Jeeper lives right around the corner from us, or from me rather. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, and got to, I was sick as a dog, you know, still fighting this cold. Uh, this last weekend, went over there, snapped some pictures of the installation process as they oh, were going great. through this. Now, they were using my, my press, and, and I went up and got some uh, some other tools and stuff to make things a little bit easier on them. And, uh, you know, I'm just trying to help out here. And uh, and really, the, the quality, the weight, the heft of these ball joints, far superior than the OEM ones. Now, the ones that were coming out of his Jeep were shot. I mean, you could actually pull the post right out of the socket. Yeah. Uh, on, on one of them. I mean, it was, it was completely gone. And, uh, so, I mean, that, that alone is not a very good comparison, but there's three others that were in the Jeep that were in relatively okay shape. I mean, mm-hmm. they were obviously had, you know, a hundred thousand miles on them or so you could tell they were worn. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, if you're looking for more than an OEM replacement, uh, like the crowns, like the Spicer, like the Moog, et cetera, uh, then something like these synergies or like the alloy USAs, which I just saw just this last weekend, really might be your best bet. Now, the Alloy USAs are also available on Amazon.com, and this is actually one of the best prices I've seen for the Alloy yes, USAs. Yes, I noticed for that the too. Yeah. They're about half the price of the Synergy kit for all four, and that is shipped price to your door. Yeah, was so, it like 116 or something like that? Yeah, I'm seeing uh, just under the 120 mark. Uh, so that, that's, yeah. that's I mean, you know, that <laughs> I like the price thing. It's mm-hmm. a lot better than that 225 and so, they come with a five-year unconditional warranty as yeah, well. Yeah, I, I think the uh, synergies are like twelve months, if I rem- if I remember correctly. So, wow, five years—that's pretty nice. Mm-hmm. But but it's still, I mean, I don't necessarily want to have to buy another pair of, of ball joints. Sure. And does that make anybody else itchy when you say ball joints? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't necessarily want to have to buy another set of ball joints. But you know, it. it I guess it's not as much trouble replacing them as I thought it would be. But nonetheless. It's great to get free replacement parts, but how often am I going to be changing them? I, I, I know some of you guys like changing parts on Jeeps, especially if they're free parts. But no, I don't like sitting out there, especially during the summer, and having to do this instead of watching TV or going someplace in the Jeep. You know? Well, and, and, and this process is rather entailed. We don't have to go into the, the entire process right here and now, but let's just say there's there's a lot that goes into it, and you got to have specialty tools on yeah, hand. you really it's do. Not, this is not something that you want to do on the side of the freeway. This is certainly not something that you want to do while out on the trail. Although I would recommend carrying at least one spare set of ball joints with you to have as spares just in case, because honestly, folks, you never know what's going to happen and they don't take up a lot of room and it'd be the difference between making it home and not. Well, you know, those, those, uh, not, I was going to say Moogs, those, uh, Spicers, which, you know, if Spicers, what's in there now, I've got almost 200,000 miles on my 98. And uh, I wouldn't mind spending 50 bucks for a pair 
from Amazon. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if they're cheaper someplace else, but I got I got the ones for the ninety nine through Amazon dot com, and they were like fifty bucks a pair. Uh, I wouldn't mind having a set of new uh, ball Spicer ball joints just laying in the back of the Jeep, you know, in something in something that would be safe. So if you had a rollover, you didn't get hit in the head by a ball joint. And you know how, how comical would that be if you got killed by a ball joint you were improperly <laughs> carrying in the back yeah. of your Jeep? <laughs> hey, I want to jump uh, jump over to something else real quick, if if we can, Josh. Yeah, by all means. I know we kind of went a little bit long. It's a lot of ball talk, uh, ball joint talk there for you guys. So, <laughs> oh, no. Uh, we'll, I hear a Josh is subconscious coming. Yeah, right. No, no, we are going to uh, we are going to address this in future episodes, guys. This is a this is a good topic. I've been seeing a lot of stuff coming up on ball joints recently. A lot of our Cherokees are hitting that 200,000 mile mark or mm-hmm. more. And it seems like, you know, that's the number where st- things start to wear out. And, uh, and ball joints seem to be at the top of the list for a lot of people right now. I don't know if it's true or not, but I heard, or I'm sorry, I read that eighty to 90,000 miles is the area where you should be looking at changing ball joints. I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it. Now, it, obviously, depending on uh, your road conditions, whether or not oh, yeah. they salt the roads out there, um, Wear and maintenance tear. schedules, uh, how often you wheel, how hard you drive, et cetera, et cetera, obviously, your mileage is going to vary. I'm, I'm sure uh, so. that 80 to 90 is kind of a, a conservative uh, catch-all type situation. Uh, but like I said, I'm, I mean, the, the 99 had uh, 150,000 miles on it before. And who knows how long they were technically should have been replaced. I mean, this is we went down to Firestone after I saw the, the unusual tread wear. But anyway, uh, we have a discussion about this on xjtalk.com. you got some information on ball, ball joints, especially if you've got firsthand information uh, whether it be 50,000 miles and you had to change them or, or you've got 80,000 miles on a, on a brand and you, and they're going strong. Uh, we'd really like, I'd really like to know about it. I'm sure Josh would too, because we're looking at purchasing something and we'd like to know what it was you purchased, what kind of difficulties you, you had or didn't have in the installation. Um, whether it's Spicer, Moog, whatever, uh, it, it would be great help. And, and of course help to, to people, uh, in the future searching for this same information on xjtalk.com. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Uh, we'd love to hear from you, either by uh, a post on the website, xjtalk.com, uh, by an email, sending it to us over at xjtalk.com, uh, even a uh, voicemail. Uh, if you guys have a suggestion for uh, what you've bought in the past or bought in the past, <laughs> what you'd uh, <laughs> what you'd buy again, and most importantly, please send us a voicemail to 530-675-4102. Now, Josh, real quick, and I, I'm going to try to make this real quick. Uh, yes, sir. I... I, I I think you caught it in chat, and I think this is why you aren't reading posts because you're in chat too much. But we'll we'll talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> I think you may have read this in, in chat, but uh, somebody just purchased a uh, used, not new, new to me, uh, ARB RD100 air right. locker for the Dana Thirty. Yeah, I saw that post. Uh, you got uh, what I what I assumed was a pretty screaming deal. If I was reading the, uh, uh the AP, right. 40,000 miles, seven years old. <laughs> it's uh, it's been in a TJ, but it was all synthetic, uh, gear oil. I just, uh, you know, I checked with Matt, uh, M. Smorenberg, uh, other admin extraordinaire on, uh, xjtalk.com. And, uh, he said, yeah, I mean, I figured the ARB, uh, gee, those things are pretty, pretty much bulletproof. Now they I am, really am going to be looking at, uh, g- a touching base with ARB and finding out if there's anything that I should replace or update with it prior to going through all the trouble of, uh, of it putting in. And, uh, what a trooper Matt says, because you know, I have a, uh, also have an ARB for the Chrysler 8.25, uh, that has not been installed yet. So uh, what a trooper, Matt said. Uh, Matt, Matt said, "Well, that's fine. Bring them both. We'll uh, put them in both on the same day." <laughs> that is awesome, and that's actually quite a task because that's going to involve uh, resetting up the gears and everything as well. These oh, are yeah. not lunchbox lockers, folks. These are full case lockers. If you're not familiar with ARB lockers, they are the industry standard as far as uh, you know off-road <laughs> traction devices go for your differentials. Uh, Tony, the, the, uh, the ARB, the RD 100s, they are rebuildable. Mm -hmm. Um, I uh, recently spoke with, um, somebody who's uh, in basically in your same condition. Uh, they actually bought an entire axle assembly uh, and in it was one of the old ARBs. They had no idea the mileage on it, uh, the kind of use wear, wear, tear or abuse that it had seen. Uh, and they were looking to rebuild it. Now, a uh, an authorized ARB distributor and um, one of the go-to places for uh, differential gear, transmission, and transfer case 
uh, to work out in my area, a uh, place called RMP Four Wheel Drive. They um, they will offer a, a to rebuild these, and from what I understand, it's it's right around a hundred dollars or so. So the, the oh, wow. Groups, the, the kit, uh, labor, everything, it's really not all that expensive. Mm-hmm. So if, uh, if a place is offering to do it, uh, and now, now that, that price was quoted in, under the assumption they were going to be doing a lot of other work as well, uh, re-gearing, uh, re, you know, set up and stuff like that, welding on some new tabs, that might have been a package deal price. But nonetheless, um, you're, you're into it, you know, half of what, you know, these things cost retail, uh, even if you're into it, 150 or 200 bucks for a full rebuild of this thing, it's going to be a brand spanking new yeah. AR unit when you're all said and done. Well, it's it's a huge hunk of metal. I mean, I know the one for the really 8.25 is just it's a zombie killer, man. It's it's yeah. just it's you know it's like army tank type stuff. So, uh, really looking forward to getting that. And and nobody got my joke. I mean, I get so much ribbing about having this this built XJ that I don't take off road, and my joke was. Uh, does anybody else think about f- be, being fully locked while sitting in traffic? Oh. And, and no, I didn't mean just thinking about it. I mean, actually being in traffic, bumper to bumper, and hitting the switches. Well, <sighs> here's the thing is, is now, now you guys out there who have ARBs uh, and, and onboard air systems, you're going to know this. Um, when you flick the, the switch that activates the solenoids, and it's a solenoid-controlled mm-hmm. uh, pneumatic system, so there's pressure that's sent down the line, um, you know, you flip on the, the switch for the compressor, the compressor pressures the, pressurizes the line, you flip the switch for the solenoid, the solenoid passes that pressure down to the locker, and it, and it, moves, it engages and disengages uh, the two halves of the differential, essentially. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you disengage that, that pressure that's in the line is sent back out through the solenoid, and there's this pssst sound. Oh, that, wow, uh, cool. <laughs> yeah, and so I could see you in traffic sitting there, pssst. Just you know, I'll do it next to the. I'll playing, do it next to the damn just to hear the sound and stuff like that, and see I'll the little light on the dash go on. And yeah, I'll do it to the next to those damn eighteen wheelers that have it. Uh, the air brakes that's doing that oh, all the time. You yeah. know, it scares the hell it's out of people. Nowhere near that loud. Oh, yeah, I, bet, well, I bet. I wonder if I can amplify it. Anyway, very similar. Very so, similar. so should be looking at doing that soon. Uh, I'm gonna have to put up, do the onboard air system. I'm not doing going with an a- ARB. Uh, air compressor. I have a, a, a two and a half gallon tank, a, a, a via air or via air, uh, nice compressor, hundred uh, percent, uh, continuous duty, blah, blah, blah. I just no, got to get under the Jeep and, and mount all that stuff up. And, uh, uh, in my conversation with, uh, one of our interviewees, uh, uh, well, ARB interviewee, uh, he was telling me, you know, it doesn't matter what pressure you put on it. It, it it's, I think they rated it up to like 300 PSI. So uh, I don't have to worry about, uh, making sure the lines are a certain pressure or anything. All I have to do is install the damn thing. Um, the, the air system and then Matt and I will uh, finish up with, uh, with the lockers. So really looking forward to that. And, uh, Oh, uh, other thing, I cleaned up the garage. I, I put the the tool chest in place, and through the cleaning up, a general cleanup, and 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 putting all the the tools in a pile, so to speak, in that nice big red uh, Craftsman uh, tool chest, uh, mm-hmm. I found my transfer case skid. Hey. <laughs> So <laughs> would you look at that? See what happens when you clean your room? <laughs> exactly. So uh, I should be able to get the transfer case skid back on there. And damn it, I should be uh, pretty well. Uh, the only thing I've got worried about now is the, the ball joints. I don't really want to go out and have a ball joint pop out on me. So I need to get yeah. those replaced. And, you know, it's it's like Rosanna, uh, Rosanna, Rosanna, Dana said, it's always something. <laughs> yeah, it certainly is with the Jeep. Hey, let's move on to our uh, iTunes reviews. Yeah, I'm glad to see you guys are doing this. Uh, we uh, recently found out that a lot of our listeners, a lot of our, our uh, podcast downloads are coming from iTunes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that that's really cool. That's really good. I know that earlier on, uh, you know, a couple of years ago or whatever, we were you know doing a little bit of iTunes bashing, and and that's just because Tony and I, uh, you know, we're a little bit more of, of Android or PC type of. Yeah, uh, it was uh, really uh, Apple bashing. The, the iTunes, you know, is just kind of got it by. Uh, <laughs> friendly yeah, fire so by association <laughs> yes. as, as it were um but you know really glad to see that you guys are are, are downloading the the podcast um love to see the itunes numbers keep uh, blowing up they just keep increasing mm-hmm. and keep increasing and keep increasing uh so you guys are doing a great job thank you for that and keep up the good work and we got a a great review here um by uh the username is jd us jj zhs 
yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sure it says or spells something, uh, but I just don't have it in me right now to figure that out. But he says, wow, guys, exclamation point. Great work. Five star review. Uh, this is one of the best sources for off-road listening pleasure. The segments on the show are very informative and helpful. If you're looking at getting into an XJ or any off-roader, this is the podcast for you. Tony and Josh are great, and they keep things lively. Two thumbs up and five stars for the XJ Talk Show. You know, I, I can't say how much I appreciate this, and I don't know about you, Josh. Perhaps it's the the modesty. I just It's hard for me to believe they're talking about me. <laughs> well, it, it's it's great feedback nonetheless. Like I've said, guys, whether it's a five-star or three-star review, we like to hear the feedback. We like to hear from you guys, uh, whether it's you know just to say, hey, good job, or you know, hey, quit all that Cherokee bashing. You know, that's the kind of stuff that we that we really want to hear because honestly, we're doing this for you guys. Now, Tony and I have a great time doing this show, um, but you know, if if it wasn't for you guys, well, you know, we'd just be sitting here talking to ourselves. Yeah. And uh, it'd be a lot less pressure because uh, if uh, uh, if something bad happened here, I would just go to bed. I wouldn't come back. <laughs> Josh would understand. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have no choice in the matter, really. So, <laughs> and that's happened before too, hasn't it? I just yeah, uh, it yeah. just kind of went away. Power went off here, and I just kind of went away. But that's, uh, I, was, uh, I was wondering if that was going to happen tonight. So, <laughs> well, you never know. You never know with electronics, do you? I mean, it's like like our late start today. So uh, I want to remind you guys, uh, Josh reminded us about the voicemails. Uh, While we had just a a bunch of voicemails last week, uh, this week, not so many. Uh, Apologize for Nikki to Nikki G. Uh, He did get one in the last minute. I did not have a chance to edit it and get on the show, but we will have it on for next week. Uh, I hate that because Nikki always has something funny, but uh, we'll uh, we'll have that. You guys don't forget uh, if you have an event. If you uh, if you got a business, I don't care. Uh, if you guys want to call in and uh, promote your business, your event, uh, whether it's profit or nonprofit, don't care. Call in. Uh, if you just want to say hi, and uh, as always, drunken ladies are encouraged to call in. Absolutely, and uh, just for uh, for instance, Tony, let me interject really quick here. Uh, I know we earlier we talked about the Hidden Wounds XJ project. Mm-hmm. Uh, just found out here just in the last few minutes. This is breaking news, guys. Um, uh, Harry Franco, who is, I, I pretty, I think pretty much heading up that whole project. He actually had surgery yesterday to remove a mass from his colon. And, uh, it's a pretty invasive procedure. Uh, if, if, if I know anything about, uh, about, about ass surgery, uh, but <laughs> all, you know, hey, all kidding serious. aside, you know, all kidding aside, um, obviously that's, you know, he's going through quite a time right now. Uh, really hope that, uh, it's non-cancerous. I really hope that he has a, a clean recovery and that he's on the mend and, and up and going soon. I uh, found out here just just now, in fact, that he is up and walking, in fact, mm. uh, with the aid of a walker, uh, less than 24 hours after the surgery. So the guy's got uh, one heck of a will and obviously a drive to to really keep moving forward. So, uh, Harry, if you're out there listening, uh, good luck, buddy, and uh, get well soon. And, and we hope it doesn't hurt when you laugh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I heard just the other day on, on the television uh, where they were promoting – uh, the, uh, oh, what is it? Prostate, not prostate. The, um, the, the, where they, they slide the tube up your butt and, and look for polyps and stuff. I forget what it's called. Colon, a, col- colon, uh, colon, colonoscopy. Os- oh, there, there we go. Yes. And, uh, so I heard that if it's caught soon enough, there's a 90% recovery rate. So, uh, oh. yeah, or not recovery rate, cure rate. So, and you know, uh, you guys go out there and, uh, no matter, uh, what they, uh, what what your dad told you? Get it checked because it's a good thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, let's move on to our Wrangler segment. And Josh, we need a what did we call them? A promo, a little segment intro with music yeah. or sounds yeah. or explosions or something. Yeah, we are going to need to get a um, something going here for Rob. Now Rob's been very kind to um, really step up his game and and do a weekly uh, submission here for us for our new Wrangler segment. Now, folks, we still haven't given this an official name. We're just calling yeah. it the Wrangler segment because, well, a lot of the tech that um, that Rob talks about is Wrangler specific, and that's the whole intent of this whole thing. Uh, but you know, Tony and I obviously are um, only so creative. And we obviously need your guys' help every now and again. We'd like to get your guys' input on this one. If you've got a good name for the Wrangler segment, we'd like to hear from you. Uh, you can send it to the news tips line at xjtalk.com. That's news tips at xjtalk.com. We'll get it that way if you're uh, email friendly. If you'd like to just send us a quick voicemail, give us a call at 530 675 
4102 and let us know what you think we should call the Wrangler segment. Absolutely. We love involvement and uh, well, we have a lot of involvement, even though Josh and I have been doing a lot of talking, which is unusual because we really haven't been talking that much on the uh, the podcast and and damn it, I miss it. I don't know if you guys do, but I miss not talking about all these things. I, I like getting my thoughts out there about ball joints and you know, which ones I should buy for mine. And, you know, I'm sure you guys realize, and we promote this on uh, YouTube and uh, really everywhere, we're two uh, Jeep Cherokee owners, real Jeep Cherokee owners. We're not a corporation. We're not somebody hired to talk about this stuff. We talk about this stuff because it's Jeep Cherokees. We love them. We own them. And uh, we drive them. Uh, I drive mine every day. It's a daily driver. So uh, love it. Always get great looks and uh, get comments from everybody. Sometimes the comments are hostile, but, you know, I did just, uh, miss them by that much. So <laughs> anyway, uh, this is going to be a, uh, a Wrangler segment. I, now I've already listened to this, Josh, and I thought it's, this is probably the best, uh, Wrangler segment that, uh, Rob has, uh, has done so far. It's a personal experience that he had had with his 2011, uh, uh Wrangler JK. And uh, it wasn't a pleasant experience. It's about multiple visits to the Mopar dealership, the oh. uh, yeah, the Dodge dealership, to uh, fix a problem. But uh, I'll let you uh, let you hear it in Rob's words right now. Hey guys, this is Rob from CoolGuyStuff.tv, joining the team at the XJ Talk Show to bring you another great installment of All About Wrangler. This time, I have something very near and dear to my heart to share because I had a brutal nightmare before I finally found this solution to my problem. What am I talking about? I am talking about my leaky piece of garbage, nobody would help me hardtop on my Jeep. So let's go back to 2011, I buy my car. First rain of the season, I realize that I am getting a lot of water inside my car. And if you own a Wrangler, you know that the car is probably going to leak at some point. So, uh, and hopefully it's just not so bad that it ruins anything. And plus everything in there is made to get destroyed and replaced anyway. So it's not that big of a deal. Unless if you have rivers pouring into your floorboard like I did. So after going back to the dealership uh, the first time to get it fixed, I said, okay, guys, didn't work. Why don't we try replacing the top? They're like, no, no, I can't do that. Let's follow the procedure that Chrysler puts out and let's do whatever weather stripping and that kind of junk that that, that they uh, require. Okay, there's time two. Time three, go back. Okay, guys, that didn't work. How about if we replace the doors? No, sorry, can't do that. Just got to follow Chrysler's uh, recommendation here on how to fix this problem. It's a, it's, I guess it's a common problem throughout my model or my year of Jeep. Okay, fix it up, send me away, come back a fourth time. All right, guys, I really, really, really think that if we replace the top, it will fix the issue. So from that point forward, it's now the fourth or fifth time. And I start thinking, oh, this thing sucks. I'm never going to get it fixed. I can't wait for a couple more years. I'm just going to turn this dumb thing in and get a new one. But cooler heads prevailed. And they sent me away once again with a quote unquote fixed top. So I figure, okay, it's not the doors. It's not the top. What the heck could it be? So I take my, I take my uh, hard top and I replace it with a soft top. And that helped tremendously. But they've done so much damage to my, uh, to my doors trying to fix the, the weather stripping and stuff that it's, it's still leaky. I go back fifth time, I go back a sixth time, I go back a seventh time. On the eighth time, literally the eighth time going back to the dealership, they hate me, I hate them, nobody could figure out what the problem is. They say, forget it, we're going to send this to the body shop, we'll take the doors all the way off, we'll reinstall it from the hinge out and get the factory specs on it. That has to be the problem. I don't think so, guys. You have these moldings, you have this door trim, all that kind of thing. How could that be the problem? Doesn't matter. Got to follow what Chrysler says. They say, do this. I say, okay, well, I've had enough. So I contact an attorney to do a lemon law case on my, on my Jeep. So for those of you who don't know what the lemon law is, and I guess it's something like three or four times you go back for the same problem, you officially can open a lemon law case. 
Okay. So, I mean, they have to try to fix it. They have to do their due diligence and all that other stuff, but you could try it. So I contact the attorney, said, perfect. This is definitely a limited law case. You can't possibly go back eight times with a leaky car and have them not fix anything. So I go, cool. Our attorney's doing his thing. I just say, go, go do your thing. Let me know when it's done. In the meantime, I keep going back to continue to try to fix it. So I go back a ninth time. A ninth time the car doesn't fix. Uh, I'm, I'm now at my wits end. I come attack my attorney. I say, hey, guys, come on. Where are we at with this? They say, we just reached Chrysler, and they are willing to give you a settlement if you agree to wipe the, the service record clean and keep the car. Well, I say, what kind of settlement? Of course. And I'm not, I won't disclose the exact amount, but I will tell you it was enough money to put my Jeep, tax, license, everything out the door well under the $20,000 mark. So I say, who cares about the leak? Of course I will take that. That's great. You know, that I basically bought a 2011 Jeep for under 20 grand, well under 20 grand. So... Days go past. I, I get. I finally get the check, and I say, "Okay, what am I going to do? I'm going to go. I am going to go buy my own top for this vehicle because I really believe it's just the top." So I take my hard top, I sell it on Craigslist. I tell the guy, "Hey, I'm selling it because uh, it was very leaky to my car. I don't know if it's my car, or the top, but it leaks around the doors on my car. So you're welcome to it if you want it, but." That's the issue I had to it. I gave him a good deal on it. He took the top. I haven't heard anything since, so I'm sure he's happy. In the meantime, I went and I purchased the Trek Top NX, which you guys should take a look at. It has the slanted back windows, which makes it look really cool. Uh, z- Heavy-duty zippers. Um, it's a super easy install. I think I installed it in, in 30 minutes, maybe. And, uh, and I really had no drilling, any of that stuff to do. It was it was just a great, great uh, experience for me. And the thing cost on sale just over 600 bucks. So what Chrysler paid me multiple thousands of dollars to go away for, Best Top stepped in and fixed for 600 bucks. No more leaks. I love this top. So if you guys are looking to replace your leaky top, or you just uh, want to get something fun for springtime, summertime, the Trek Top NX is the way to go. This thing is awesome. I love it. So check it out online because you will love it too. All right, guys, that's it for this week. If you want to contact me, look me up at www.coolguystuff.tv or email me at jeeplife at coolguystuff.tv. You can also find me on Twitter, X Rob Spencer X. X R O B S P E N C E R X. Until next week, guys, enjoy Jeep life and the great outdoors. Well, once again, big thanks to Rob for uh, putting that information out there. Yeah, best top guys really make some good stuff for all you Wrangler guys out there. For seat covers to tops, there's really no better brand. Yeah, I thought I'd mention real quick. Uh, I'd have to double check, but I'm I'm like 99% sure that's uh, the same top that I got for the 2003 TJ, and it is. It's very nice. Uh, my wife uh, is uh, too short and not strong enough to actually take all the zipper stuffs down by herself, but yeah. uh, but I can get it, and it's really cool because at least on the TJ version, you can take the, all the sides off and leave the top, and the part over the driving passenger area folds back. And yeah, it, it does have awesome. that nice slant on the back too, and that was uh, that's really cool and differentiates differentiates it uh, from the uh, the stock covers. So very nice, and uh, love hearing that first person account nine times. Remember that from Ferris Bueller's Day Off? Nine yeah, exactly. times. Nine <laughs> times. Yeah, I uh, I actually posted that up in the chat on the YouTube channel. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow, sweet deal. I mean, I need to find a problem that uh, that Chrysler can't fix. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I, I don't wish that kind of experience on anybody, but uh, in the end, everything got fixed out and sounds like he ended up uh, on top. So, uh, you know, can't go wrong there. Yep. So I, I mentioned at the top of the show, which seems like a long time ago now, uh, <laughs> we've had a lot of issues uh, in the show tonight, guys. Uh, but uh, we uh, we have a, a great new segment that we're going to be doing, uh, Radio Com Tech. And uh, this was brought upon, uh, brought about by uh, John Prerunner1982 from xjtalk.com putting together a, a tip about uh, trail communications, CB radios. 
And now it's time for some radio com tech. Another warrior is on the mesa. This is John, pre-runner 1982, and today I'm going to talk about trail communication, in particular the CB radio. A lot of Jeepers and off-road enthusiasts have CB radios in their rigs. Um, unfortunately, though, there are those that have them that think it's just as easy as dropping in a radio and slapping an antenna on the side. Um, unfortunately, it is those same people typically that complain about not being able to hear others or that others can't hear them. And that's because there is a little bit of tech that goes into um, the CB radio and, and mounting the antenna and, and such. And uh, that's what we're going to discuss today. We're going to start with the CB radio itself. Now, there are choices out there to choose from. Um, there's the compact radio like the Cobra 19 or the, the unit in Pro 505, 510. And then you get into the big radios um, like the Cobra 29s and 25s. And... Um, they have a lot of uh, buttons and, and dials and, and switches and, and real flashy, and they run about 150 bucks. But they're really not necessary for a, a trail rig um, communication or the or, or the the enthusiast, not the everyday user. Those radios are, are good for you know truck drivers and and such, but for, for really for the the um, weekend user, it, those aren't necessary. The compact radios are really the way to go. Um, they're they're for one, they're cheaper, usually about forty to fifty dollars, and they're smaller, so they're easier to mount um, in a smaller vehicle like a Jeep or a Samurai or Bronco or such. Um, they don't have as many as many buttons and switches and stuff, um, but they're easier to mount. There's also the Cobra 75, and it has all the controls and the display and everything in the handheld mic. And uh, it sure makes it a lot easier to mount, as the body of the radio can be mounted underneath the seat. And uh, the mic part of it just clipped to the dash. Uh, but you run into the problem with all, the, all those switches and stuff being mounted on the mic. They're small, and it's not easy to handle, uh, especially when you're going down the trail and, or down the road. Um, you don't want to be fumbling with the mic, trying to trying to hit the little button or, or move the little dial. Um, so that's really the only drawback to that. Speaking of mounting, uh, in a, a typical four-wheel drive uh, Jeep or, or like I said, uh, Bronco or, or FJ Cruiser, something like that, there are two pretty common mounting places between the sun visors and on the passenger side of the transmission tunnel. Of course, that depends on, on the layout of your interior and, and, and such, but... Those are the two most common places on most any uh, typical off-road vehicle. Now, as far as having the radio mounted between the sun visors, you usually end up with the mic cord hanging down in front of your face or, or in your field of vision. And although the radio is in your field of vision, um, you get that mic cord swinging around in front of your face, and it can be very distracting, or if you suffer from motion sickness, it could also um, cause motion sickness as well. I personally, in my 93 Cherokee, have my uh, Cobra 19 mounted just to the left of the ashtray on a little angled lower uh, dash panel. And uh, with the with the five speed, the radio is, is within easy reach. In fact, I hardly ever have to take my hand off of the shifter to make adjustments to the radio. The next, the next issue is how do you power the radio? Once you figure out where you're going to mount it, how do you power it? The three ways of powering your radio are either through the fuse box, through a cigarette lighter plug, or directly to the battery. The best of those options being directly to the battery. Usually when you wire in through either the fuse, the fuse box or fuse panel or the cigarette lighter, a lot of times you end up with a whine that will change pitch as the engine RPM changes. And that's uh, caused by RF feedback from the alternator or the ignition system, such as the uh, spark plugs and plug wires. And um, usually if you have that problem and you switch to the radio being powered directly from the battery, in most cases that whine will go away. Now that whine doesn't always exist. I noticed it more in the older vehicles, um, like my 82 uh, Chevy pickup, uh, when I had it. ICB wired up through the, uh, the cigarette lighter. When I had my radio uh, powered the same way in my Jeep Cherokee, I didn't notice I didn't have a problem with, with any kind of whine. Uh, but in general, it's always best to have it powered directly from the battery. 
So you figured out what radio you want, you got it mounted, and you got it powered. The next thing will be the antenna, and that'll be next time on the XJ Talk Show. Hey, man, that's great. Thanks a lot, John. Yeah, that is uh, that is really cool stuff, John. Thank you so much for taking the time to do that. Uh, really quick, the, he was talking about that ground loop with his, that audible tachometer yes. sound you'll hear. Uh, and that's usually when he's talking about the older versus newer vehicles. That's uh, internal versus external regulators and the, uh, and the alternators. Yeah, that battery acts as a big filter. So uh, when you connect to the battery, you're actually uh, eh, pretty much bypassing your electrical system and it's pulling the juice from the battery. You will get some some uh, some charge from the alternator, but that battery acts like a nice big DC filter, and you get a nice smooth DC going to your rig. And also, too, I know it's only four watts out, guys, but uh, you know, to me, when it's only four watts, I want as much power as I can get to make sure I'm getting that full four watts. And I guarantee you, you run uh, the right size cable, uh, right size wire to your battery, you're going to get enough amps to get four watts out of that radio. So that's another good reason to run that uh, cable all the way to the battery. Absolutely. Well, guys, uh, another show in the can, almost at least. I know it's kind of been a rough one tonight, uh, lots of technical difficulties. Uh, hopefully we got all those ironed out. We won't be experiencing any of that anymore. But I'd like to make sure you guys are checking us out on Facebook. Make sure you friend us over there and stay active. We're on the site. Very active uh, part over there on Facebook. Hope to see you guys there. We are on Twitter as well as Stitcher Radio. And, of course, TuneIn.com and iTunes as well. All kinds of avenues for you guys to get your listen on. Yep. Uh, hey, if you like the show, be sure and help us out by telling a friend. Uh, don't keep it to yourself. This isn't like that pretty girl down the street. We want everybody to share us. <laughs> That's right. So make sure you tell a friend. Turn them on to the show. Uh, make sure you have plenty of links available, guys, at any one of the sites I just mentioned. Make sure you head over to xjtalk.com, xjtalkshow.com, where the entire archive is at your disposal for your listening pleasure. Uh, and, of course, YouTube every Thursday, 10 p.m. Central, for the live show. And, uh, well, all the shows are there as well for you guys to check out. Hey, uh, another thanks, uh, big thanks to Rob for our uh, third installment on the Wrangler segment. Love to have our uh, Jeep, more of the Jeep brethren in uh, watching the show, listening to the show. And, uh, you know, hats off to John for coming out from behind the curtains and taking a seat in that third seat that Josh has often told us about. That You're always welcome to be part of the show. Hey, if you got a Wrangler tip, if you've got a uh, radio contact tip, you're more than willing to join in with us. It's not uh, specific individuals for the show. We love having uh, things and people uh, help out. Yep. Until next time, I'm Josh. He's Tony, and we'll see you next time. I'm not Josh. See ya. <laughs> <laughs>